Hi, this is Craig Calvert. I decided to make a part two to this video because I thought part one, though it talked about the technique, it really didn't emphasize, I don't think, the workflow. So I thought I'd make one that is strictly about the workflow. And in this case, I'm going to uh, apply the technique to sharpen the Eastern Veil Nebula. The first step in this process is to prep the image. Uh, this image has undergone dynamic background extraction and dynamic crop. Um, what we want to do in addition to that, first of all, to remove the stars, I'm using StarNet 2 here, and to keep the star mass so that you can add it back, the stars back later. You don't want to have the stars in the image when you're doing this sharpening. And I did this previously, there's my, uh, my star mask and also my starless image. The next step is to reduce the noise. And you can see there's quite a bit of noise in this image. The reason is because most of that noise is in the finer scales. And when you're sharpening, you're going to boost those finer scales, which means that you're also going to boost the noise. And it will become very visible. So I'm going to use, um, uh, for me, Noise Exterminator. It works well. You use what works for you. And there it is. So it's pretty clean. The next thing I'm going to do is to stretch the image using the histogram transformation. Okay. With the image preparation. Okay, now we're going to analyze the image. First thing we're going to do is extract a layer. So under Scripts, Image Analysis, there's a script called Extract Wavelet Layers. And in here you have a, you choose the data set. Um, the number here is the number of layers you're going to extract. We're only going to do one in this case. And then this checkbox, it says extract the residual also. So you can see it. And usually I just leave that check because of, I want to see the residual. So let's extract this one layer. And the reason I'm extracting this first layer is, is not uncommonly, it's very noisy and have, may have very little signal in it, very little information. And if that's the case, I don't want that layer. I want to get rid of it. I, I will call that a trash layer. Let's see if this, in fact, is a trash layer. So let's first look at the residual and compare it to the um, original. And you can see they look very, very similar. Um, the reason they look very, very similar is take a look at the extracted layer. And you don't see much in there. But if I enlarge it somewhat, you will see a lot of very fine scale noise. And you're going to be hard pressed to find signal. You can look around. And hopefully you'll find something. If not, oh, there we go. A little bit of signal, okay? A little bit of information that is actually uh, has the character of the of the of the image, and that little thing there, I believe, is that. Okay, so it has a little bit of signal, has quite a bit of noise, and if you really are a quantitative kind of person, you can actually measure signal to noise ratio. You can also, uh, under image analysis, you can also uh, do noise evaluation. And so you get three numbers out and because there's an RGB, you get R, G, and B, the three different channels. And you can look at those noise values. They might not mean much to you unless you compare them to something. So you could do the same with the original image and see, well, is this, what's the signal to noise ratio of this relative to the original image? How much noise is there in this relative to the original image? Or you could be qualitative like I am and take a look at it and say, you know, that's pretty noisy, not a lot of signal in it. Um, I think what I'm going to do is get rid of it. I'm going to call this residual here as my new uh, cleaned up image. It's basically the same as the image minus this trash layer. And I'm going to trash the trash layer. So now we have uh, a new image, basically the same as the other one, just cleaned up a bit. I'm going to now extract some more layers. And this time I'm going to extract five layers. And then what I'm going to do is look at each of those layers. I'm going to analyze them. And the reason why I'm doing five, you might do six, you might do four, 
But in general, the first five layers are going to be your finer scales. So these are the layers that you're going to affect, you're going to manipulate to when you go to sharpen your image. So let's take a look at those five uh, layers, the five layers and the residual. Now, if you look at this residual, you'll see that it's fuzzier looking than the other one. And that's because we removed five of the finer scale layers. So this has mostly just coarse scales in it. And these are all the different layers and we'll take a look at them one by one. Okay, let's look at the first one. Not much information in the first one at all. The finest scale layer has a little bit of noise. You can see more information than we saw on the trash layer, but still very little signal. The second layer, and it's very fine. This one's a little bit coarser, still fine. And you can see, there you go. You can see quite a bit more signal and not a lot of noise. So these have very little signal. I'm going to call those my fine scale layers together, combined. This one has a little more signal, quite a bit more. And it's a little bit coarser scale than those others. And I'm going to call that my medium scale layer. These two are very are much coarser and they're much more information, much more higher signal. And so, um, and, and I'm going to combine those and call those my, together my coarse scale layers. So I'm going to call those my core scale, three my medium scale, and two and one my fine scale. And now I want to talk about the workflow for sharpening the image. We start with the unsharpened image, which we just saw. It has core scales and finer scales, has them all. We haven't extracted anything. Then we're going to extract some residuals, and we're going to do this three times. For what I'll call the core scale residual, we'll extract layers one through five. For what I'm going to call the medium scale residual, we're going to extract layers one through three. Remember I said four and five were coarse, three was medium. And for the fine scale residual, we're going to extract just layers one and two. And then what we're going to do is we're going to subtract those extracted residuals from the unsharpened image. And we're going to multiply each by coefficients. Notice I have two times the unsharpened minus one times the extracted residual equals something, which is a sharpened image. Now the way this works is as follows. First, the difference in those coefficients, two and one, always have to equal one. If it is too bright, it'll become too bright if it's greater than one, or too dark if less than one. It could be four minus three, or two minus one, or whatever. And the rest is simple math. Two times the core scales, plus two times the finer scales, minus one time the core scales, equals one time the core scales plus two times the finer scales. So sharpening occurs because we've increased the finer scales two times, which is the coefficient we used for the unsharpened image. If it was four times the unsharpened image minus three times the extracted residual, it would be four times the finer scales. Okay, so the second point I want to make is the more information in the extracted scales, the stronger the sharpening effect. What do I mean by this? Basically, the fuzzier the image in the middle is, the stronger the sharpening effect is going to be on the right side. Because this can happen in a couple of ways. Um, it'll be fuzzier if you extract five scales versus three scales. Or if in the layers you do extract, there's a lot of signal, more signal, then you'll have a fuzzier extracted residual, which means you'll have a sharper final image. Generally, the finer scale layers contain less signal and more noise than the coarser scale layers. I don't know if this is universally true, but it's what I've noticed. So the finer scale layers have less information and more noise. You've got to clean up that noise or remove it. And if the signal is weak, then you might consider lumping together some of these finer scale layers as we did with layers 1 and 2. And the final point here, it says decrease the values of the coefficient if there is too much sharpening and increasing if there is too little. This makes sense, because that coefficient of two times the unsharpened image resulted in two times the finer scales. If that was ten times, it would be ten times the finer scales. So if it looks like you didn't sharpen enough, increase the coefficient. Try it again. If it looks like you sharpened too much, decrease the coefficient.
Okay, let's uh, extract those three sets of residuals for the fine, medium, and coarse scales. Now, I, I chose to work with three different scales, coarse, medium, and fine. You don't have to. You could do just one scale, or you could do five. It's up to you. But I, I did chose three because I want to see how, they, how similar or different they are when I uh, sharpen them. Okay, we'll start with the coarse. And so same thing, uh, we'll go and extract five layers for the coarse. And we've seen this before, we've done this a couple of times now. So there's our residual that's, re that's left over after we extract the five scales. And there are five scales. Now, as I mentioned in the first video, you can't do anything with these. Other than look at them and maybe analyze them, you can't add them and subtract them these individual layers. So we're going to get rid of them. They're not of any use to us, but the residual is. And we're going to call it the coarse scale. And we're going to do this two more times. Uh, one for the medium, and uh, which is going to be uh, layers one through three removed, and one for the fine, which will be one and two removed. And I'm going to speed up the video here so you don't have to see it uh, you can see it a little bit happening a little bit faster. Okay, so first the medium, which would be layers one through three. Extract them out. Keep the residual. And we'll name it medium. We'll get rid of those. Medium scale. Okay. And then one more time, which would be for the fine. And this will be two layers. We'll keep the residual. Rename it. And we'll get rid of the extracted layers. Okay, so we're going to take those three scales and we're going to sharpen each one independently. Okay, so we're going to start with the fine scale. And if you remember, layers one and two had very little signal, so we're going to have to assign um, large coefficients uh, to this so that we can actually see some sharpening happening. So I think I'm going to use, start with 10 uh, minus 9. And those are actually uh, pretty large numbers. And I might get it wrong, and I'll know that as soon as I create the image. And then I can adjust the coefficients as needed. So 10 minus 9, let's see what it looks like. Create a new image. OK. Now, move that out of the way and compare them. And it's hard to tell, but you, it is sharpened somewhat. Maybe if I enlarge it a little bit, you, it is it is um, it is sharpened at the finest scales. So I think you can see it's a little it it's not quite as blurry looking. But you know, let me try something different. Let me, let me add a little more, 15 and 10, just just for the heck of it, and see what kind of a difference it makes. It should be sharper, right? And if you look at them carefully, it is sharper. Perhaps, in my opinion, it's over sharpened. So what I'm going to do is, I could keep playing with this, but I'm going to get rid of the one I just did, and I'm going to keep the first one I did, um, and I'm just going to call it, um, you know, you're fine. That's your fine scale sharpening. And I'm going to do this two more times again. And I'm going to speed up the video. I'm going to do it again for the medium, which and the, and the course. I'm going to lower the coefficients because remember, the more information that you have um, to, that you're going to extract out, the lower these coefficients have to be. So in this case, um, let's try five and four. And it looks pretty good. Six and five. It also looks good. I like the other one better. Again, see this how visual this is. It's just a matter of what you want, what you your, what you like, um, and you can iterate on it. So we'll call this our medium uh, scale sharpening, and one for the course. 
And the chorus, remember, was combining four layers four and five, which were already very, uh, had a lot of signal in them. So these numbers are going to have to come way down, these coefficients, or else it'll become way over sharpened. So let's just start with three and two. And I'm going to tell you right now, I think those numbers are too high. Let's see. Um, and notice, yeah, it's coarse, all right. It's coarse and over sharpened. So three and two are, to, are to, the coefficients are too high. So I'm going to bring them down to two and one. I just try it again, and you see how it softened it up. You know, maybe it's too soft. Maybe it's. I think it's 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 good from my opinion. You know, you might go 2.2 minus 1.2 or something, and and try that, but. Um, for now, for this, I think I'm going to keep it, and I'm going to call it my coarse scale sharpening. So I have three scales, and you know you could do you could do this five times. Um, it's probably not worth your time. Three may be too many. I could have done fine and coarse, but I chose three, and that was my choice. Okay, now we're going to combine these scales so that I get a multi-scale sharpened image. And you don't have to combine the different scales, but if you notice, they were different. The finer scale sharpening was finer, and the coarser was coarser. So if I mix them together, maybe it'll get me a multi-scale sharpening. So we have three sharpened images of different scales, and we have the original image. And I want to include the original image because I want to try to include some of these more delicate features. So I'm actually going to combine a little bit of this original in with the three sharpened scales. And I'm going to use coefficients uh, to multipliers to weight them. And of course the multipliers are fractions, so they have to sum to one. So I'm going to go 30% of the residual, um, of that original one, which we call residual. 30% uh, of the fine scale sharpened, and 20% of each of the other two. So let's look at the sharpened image that we just created. Okay, let's, uh, let's first look to see if we preserve some of those delicate structures, delicate textures that we saw in the original. And it looks like we did a pretty good job. I think what we see sharpened are more the string-like features. And if you look at this red area, it, you definitely can see that it's been sharpened. So I'm pretty happy with it. I preserved what I wanted to in terms of the delicate features, and I uh, sharpened up what I wanted to uh, in terms of the coarser scale features. So this one's good enough. And if I wasn't happy, I just go back in. I change the coefficients so that I emphasize the coarser scale features or the finer scale features. And the last thing we're going to do is, is to label the image. And then this is uh, the end of, of the workflow for sharpening using this technique. So though this may be more involved than many of the techniques in Pix Insight, the sharpening techniques, it's a little less mysterious. You can see what you're doing. It's somewhat more intuitive. You have control over your choices of scales and how you combine these scales to create your sharpened image. So, and it works. So I hope you give it a try, and I hope it works for you, and I appreciate you watching this video.